moment? Uh, this moment is a very dangerous moment because the United States has been misled. I believe President Trump unfortunately does not have good advisors. He's been waiting for Iranian government's uh, collapse since he withdrew from the nuclear deal. At that time, John Bolton promised him that maximum pressure will bring us to our knees within a few months. Now today, with John Bolton gone, unfortunately, somebody else is trying to mimic John Bolton and promised the president that killing Soleimani will bring people to dance in the streets of Tehran and Baghdad. You saw how many people danced. And then that continuation of maximum pressure uh, would bring us to our knees before his re-election campaign. I think uh, John Bolton was proven wrong. Now President Trump himself admits that had he kept John Bolton in office, we would be in World War VI. Uh, I think the new advice that he's receiving is as wrong as we saw in the funeral processions for General Soleimani in four Iraqi cities and many Iranian cities. Probably something that Iraq has not seen and probably something that Iran has not seen. So are you, is your, your information is that President Trump has been convinced by his advisors who say that Iran now, after, under US sanctions, is at the point of collapse. So therefore, don't think about extending a hand to Iran to engage in talks. We don't need this hand. Engage uh, in talks. You we, do we, need talks. You we, need to get out of this crisis. No, we need, we need respect for obligation. But you do need some need, kind of way out of did, this crisis. We did, we did talk. John Kerry and I spent more time together than we spent with our wives for two years. And John Kerry was not an individual. He was carrying the title Secretary of State of the United States of America. I did not talk to John Kerry. I talked to the US Secretary of State. And then what we agreed was then complemented by Security Council. It was not a bilateral agreement. It was a multilateral agreement. And President Trump simply decided that he didn't like Obama so he could leave. So, so there is no point, I mean, there is no point in talking over something you talked about. You don't buy a horse is, twice. Is there a possibility of moving toward the talks? In his State of the Union address, President Trump said, and I quote, we are here. Let us see which road they choose. It is totally up to them. No, actually, it's totally up to him, whether he wants to take the United States uh, and lead a country that is lawless, that is law-breaking, that does not respect its international agreement, that anybody who signs a deal with them would only, could only count for the next four years or the remainder of the presidency, or whether we want to deal with a country that can, in fact, uh, be following its own words. So that's, that's about the United States. But now we're talking about the Persian Gulf. Well, let me just ask you let one me... last question on this. Are President Macron or Shinzo Abe of Japan or even Vladimir Putin of Russia, are they coming to you and saying, we can help? We can help you to try to open talks again with the United States? It's not about opening talks with the United States. It's about bringing the United States back to the negotiating table that is already there. We meet every three months around that negotiating table. Until April 2018, uh, Brian Hook was at that negotiating table. He decided to leave. Now the United States can come back to the negotiating table. But unfortunately, uh, the suggestions by, by uh, Macron and by Abe and others have all fallen uh, uh, onto deaf ears because President Trump, as I told you, has been convinced that we are about to collapse. So he doesn't want to talk to a collapsing regime. Uh, I think he is wrong. I think they, they say that they're not about regime change, but that's everything they want. Everything they want, and they have wanted that for the past 41 years. And they have failed for the past 41 years. They just have to admit that Iran is a reality in this region. Now, can we move to the region? Yes, OK. So <laughs> just one, if diplomacy can't work, what about the military side? You have said that the attack so on the two military bases in Iraq. One military base. One, I said one military one base. One military base, okay. The United States said two. two. That, that was it. That was it. That was it. That was your message, and that there would be no more revenge. Is that correct? Because we've heard no, different messages correct. from the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei and, we, and from the IRGC commanders. No, actually, that the heard, revenge would continue. You've heard the same message. One message is that there was a military attack 
uh, a cowardly military attack, excuse me for saying that, at, the, uh, at night against a civilian car carrying our general. That was an act of terror. Definition of terrorism, they couldn't face Soleimani at the war front, so they hit him when he was conducting a peace mission. We responded to one of the bases from which the attack had originated. And we informed the government of Iraq beforehand, and then we responded. The military response in self-defense under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter was concluded. And that's it. That's it. But, but we still hear warnings but, which make but, people nervous. But what the United States did based on misinformation and disinformation was that it raged a lot of people. A lot of people are outraged by what the United States did. And they're not our proxies. Please stop using that so word. You mean groups, these Lebanon are groups no, no. These are not groups. Militias. These are, no, no, not militias. Men these with guns. Are, these are human beings. With Militia, guns. Militias don't come to the street carrying somebody's coffin. Human beings come to the streets, and they came to the streets not just in Iraq and Iran, but they came to the streets in Russia. They came to the streets in India. Yesterday, they were posting Soleimani's picture at the Colosseum in Rome. This, these are not our proxies. These are human beings who are tired of bullying, who are tired of lawlessness, who want to have dignity. I, I didn't use the word proxy, you did, so you put it on the, you put it on the agenda. You use, you use yes. all sorts of words, militias, proxies. But just, just to be clear, the revenge of the, of the Islamic Republic of Iran is over. No. No. Our, you see, we, we, we're not a revengeful country. We said we take a military action against a military operation. Now, killing of Soleimani and others, they killed an Iraqi mm -hmm. government official and an Iraqi military leader. That has consequences from the population. We don't control them. Okay. The, you see, okay, the United, let's, okay. let me, let you, me made your, you made your point. No, you made no, your no. point. Let me, let me say, your point. OK, yes. let me just, just. <laughs> the United States conducts operations and wants to be immune from the consequences. That doesn't happen. You cannot blame us that the United States, the president of the United States, just released the so-called deal of the century, basically enraging the entire Arab world and the Palestinian population. If there is violence in response to the deal of the century, Iran is not responsible for that. If the United States kills an Iraqi commander and there are responses, if the United States kills 25 Ira Iraqi people and there are responses from the Iraqis, it doesn't have to be Iran. Iraqis are human beings. Iraqis are dignified people. Iraq has a proud history. So Iraqis respond to the United States. They don't need an Iran to tell them to respond to somebody who is occupying okay. your territory. Okay. I mean, this is a fact of life. Believe it, please. Otherwise, you will live in ignorance.